Oh yeah, it's overseed time. So today I'm finally getting around to overseeding. I'm about two weeks behind when I would have ordinarily liked to have done it. Memorial Day is a couple weeks away and traditionally that's my first fertilizer treatment of the year. So I wanna make sure I can get some of this down soon uh, so that it can start to germinate before I put any fertilizer down on top of it. Um, it's finally started to dry out here in central New York. Uh, we had a few weeks of rain and then about the past week it's been pretty dry. So uh, I was able to get out last night and finish up thatching the lawn, um, get all of that grass pulled up so that we can get some seed down and get some good soil contact. So that's what we're going to go through today. Uh, I've got some great seed I wanted to show you uh, and I'll, I'll teach you a little bit about how to read a grass seed label because they're definitely not all the same uh, and some things about how you might want to have your, uh, your spreader set up and things like that. So let's get to it. So I know when you go to the store uh, there is, you know, aisles and aisles of grass seed uh, that's available. Um, and a lot of you guys might just pick up whatever's cheap or whatever says Northern Mix or wherever you might be located. Uh, but they're definitely not all the same. Uh, this stuff here I've used a couple times. I absolutely love it. It's a product made by Jonathan Green called Black Beauty Ultra. It works really well up here in the Northeast. Uh, it does good in the sun and the shade, um, and it has the most beautiful green color to it. So uh, it's not, not super cheap stuff, uh, but it's also not the most expensive thing you're going to find. Uh, but I wanted to go over the label a little bit with you, um, because, you know, just because uh, it's a nice big bag that's cheap, it may not always work. So if you turn any grass seed bag over, uh, you're going to see an ingredients list here on the back. And it's super important to take a look at these. It's gonna it's gonna show you what type of uh, grass is included in here. First of all, so this is a, a fescue and ryegrass mix here with a little bit of Kentucky Blue in it. Uh, but what I really want you to pay attention to is that bottom line right there. If we can get that to focus, that's 0.02 of weed seed. So that's really important for you to look at that because with any grass seed just about any one that I've ever seen, there is a certain percentage of actual weeds that are in that grass seed. You are planting weeds on your lawn. So you want to get that number as small as possible. 0.02 is a very small number. It's something that goes well enough that I can, I can work with that. But if you look at some of this cheaper stuff, like some of these contractor mixes, uh, you, you could see a very high percentage of weed seed. Um, and you're actually just introducing that into your lawn and actually making things worse by, by putting more seed down. So really pay attention to that. Uh, if you're finding a, a big bag at your, your local farm and country store that's five bucks, chances are it's, it's made as more of just a ground covering. You're not going to get beautiful grass out of it. You're going to end up with weeds and all sorts of other stuff in there as well. So really pay attention to that. The other thing I wanted to show you is uh, most bags have a spreader setting here. Uh, I myself, I use the Scott's Rotary spreader, which is one of the more common uh, spreaders that I use for both my fertilizer and my overseeding. Uh, and you're gonna have your settings right on the bag for that too. So we're gonna set this at a seven. The one thing I might do actually is, um, what I do quite often is I actually split that in just about a half. So I'll go with like a three and a half or a four and I'll do two passes crisscross. So that way I know I'm getting some more even coverage and just spreading things out a little bit more evenly. I have a relatively cheap Scott spreader, so it's not the most dependable thing in the world. So doing that again allows me to, to really spread it out, make sure I'm getting even coverage across the board. So I'm gonna go dig the spreader out of the shed. Uh, we'll get it filled up and uh, we'll get going on the front yard. So I bought, I bought my seed at Runnings, which is a store here uh, locally in central New York. Awesome place if you've got one. Um, I bought them completely out of all the stock that they had remaining of their Black Beauty Ultra. The last time I did this I bought one large bag. Came in about you know same size bag as a fertilizer bag. Uh, this is all they had, all the small stuff, and it ended up costing me way way more than it really should have. Um, but you can also get this on Amazon. Just search for Black Beauty Ultra on Amazon and uh, that's where I've gotten in previous years. So, 
Uh, here's Old Faithful, the old spreader. This is probably due to be replaced. It's dirty and worn out and, and overused, but um, it's a Scott's Edgeguard Mini, and it's enough, so it gets the job done. I've spread a lot of fertilizer through that thing. Um, so this, the amount of seed I've got here, it'll probably it'll be enough to do the front and the sides with overseeding because you're definitely dropping a lot less seed when you're overseeding, but probably won't get much of the backyard done. But we've got uh, we've got other plans for the backyard. In one of the things you're going to want to do before you just start throwing seed down is uh, walk around your yard, pick up any sort of debris and stuff, but also take note of some of your problem areas you've got. Like, for example, right here, have got a real bare spot here. There's another one on the other side of the garage as well. Um, so what I'm going to do with those is we don't want to just throw down on that hard compact dirt. So I'm going to take the yard rake and we're going to break that up a little bit. It's going to be really hard to do one-handed, so I'm going to do it off camera, but uh, if you've got any sort of holes or divots or anything like that, when you go to buy your seed, make sure you get some uh, bags of topsoil, too, to start to fill those in. I wanted to mention, too, traditionally, when you overseed, uh, first you're going to do it right after you dethatch um, or core aerate. Uh, that's the best time to do it. Uh, we dethatched about a week ago. You also want to have the lawn cut pretty short because again you want all of those seeds to get down away from the canopy into the soil uh, this is lazy lawn care I didn't do that I cut the lawn this weekend it's been about four days the lawn's probably too long um, but I'm just gonna make sure I water it in real nice get all those seeds down and not have to worry about it but if you can if you have the time cut nice and short two inches maybe shorter I wouldn't go too much shorter than that because you're really gonna scalp it but uh, cut it nice and short, get that seed down, you don't even have to worry about it. Get it watered in, and then uh, try to let it grow. One of the reasons why you cut it so short is because you're going to want to really let it grow without putting a lawnmower over it. Um, so this is probably going to have to go another week. It's going to get pretty long, uh, but you want to try to not disturb those seeds once they start to germinate. So uh, put the seeds down, skip them all, and, uh, and see how our progress goes. Even though I've done this a bunch of times, I always go back and reread these directions. So there's a whole section here on this bag about preparation, uh, prior to seeding. They talk about, uh, you know, putting down some uh, plant growth stuff, but I didn't do any of that. Uh, I haven't actually done anything to the lawn yet except for some weed control. So, um, and then this just talks about uh, after you have everything down, I you gotta make sure you keep it nice and wet. Uh, I went and reread the overseeding section. So on every bag, you're going to have an overseeding rate and then a seeding rate. This is for a brand new lawn. So we're overseeding. It's at a seven. Uh, I'm probably going to do it at about a four and do two passes, like I mentioned. So uh, let's go get the spreader set up and um, we'll get started. First bag's dumped in. It says that the smaller bags do about 1,200 square feet, so that should be enough for the front yard. Take a look at my spreader settings. We're on a seven. And then we're going to go four. We'll see how that comes out. You could always adjust that. It's not never really a perfect science. Um, so we'll head out to the yard. So this particular spreader has what they call an edge guard, which is right here. See when you flip that little lever there, this comes out. It's supposed to uh, prevent anything from coming out to this side so you can have nice crisp lines. Uh, I don't usually worry about it too much when I'm overseeding other than I do turn it on when I'm going around flower beds and stuff because we don't want grass growing in flower beds. So um, I'm probably for this one just going to be careful. We've got, we've got some raised beds here um, with some pavers around them so I'm not too concerned at this point. We're also going to be redoing a lot of them so uh, I think we are set to get started.
one important thing to keep in mind as you're doing this with these spreaders is pay attention to the width of the path that you're shooting the seeds out. Uh, it's more important when you get the fertilizer, but still pay attention to it here. Um, you know, I'm not going right next to my row. I'm spreading out you know, each time I go to turn. I move about three feet over into another row, so um, each spreader is going to be different with that. I have found that with grass seed, it doesn't fly as much as fertilizer does. Um, so my rows are a little bit tighter, but still something to pay attention to. Well, that's one pass on a four, and that's all I've got left, so probably not going to have enough seed to get very far here, but we'll crack open another bag. I'm going to do another crisscross here, we'll do the sides, and then we'll basically just see what we got left for the backyard. And there we have it, completely overseeded. No visual change yet, but we'll get there. So I did, uh, I started out with a four here for the first pass. For the second cross pass, I uh, kicked it down to a three. Figure it'll average out to seven, and uh, we should be good from there. Um, you know, one thing I, w I wanted to mention with the uh, the spreader, just walk at a normal pace. You don't have to run, you don't have to crawl. Just walk and push it. And um, it should be should be just right, you know. Find your own pace. That first pass that I did came out a little bit too heavy. Um, so I ended up walking a little bit faster with that one. With the three, it was a little bit slower. I was able to walk a little bit slower. So just find your own pace. Um, with grass seed, you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, you know, it's, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, just uh, you, you don't want to throw down too much seed. You're just wasting money and literally throwing it away. So uh, after we get the seed down, next step, you've got to water it and immediately. Uh, I like to do my first water with the hose. Just spray everything down so I'm sure I get all the, uh, the areas. Um, and then I'll also set up the sprinkler later today too. It's the hottest day of the year we've had so far. We're going to hit 80 finally here in central New York. So um, probably not the best day to do it, but... Um, that's what we'll do next. If you don't use that edge guard, you're going to find you're going to end up with a ton of extra seed all over your driveway. So for me, it's an excuse to use the new toy that was in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. We got uh, some new Eagle products in the garage, uh, but I'm just going to blow this off. Get all that seed pushed back into the grass. So the birds can't find it as easily, at least. So if you read the book, you know, typically I do all of this in the fall. Um, but you got to understand where we are in central New York. It's, uh, it stays wet a lot later. It stays a lot cooler a lot later here. Uh, so a lot of the southern guys where they're worried about, um, you know, heat stress and things like that and seed not growing because it's going to dry out. We don't have to worry about that here. We get so much rain here and uh, it stays so damp and so cool for so long that I think we're going to be okay. Um, we're giving it a shot this year. Uh, I know a lot of people have done it with a lot of success, so um, you know, well, maybe we'll maybe we'll redo it in the fall. I don't know. All right, we're all nice and watered in. Uh, and the reason we do that, I do that with the hose, is I'm trying to get 
all of those seeds down that it might be inside the top layer of the grass press them down the hose has a little bit more force a little bit more pressure to it so that's why i do it that way um but yeah uh, make sure you water it in keep it wet now uh and we'll monitor some of the bare areas for the progress and uh and see how it goes the other thing i want to show you next video look at this horrendous edge here I have been growing this out intentionally for you guys so that I can show you a nice edging tutorial. So look forward to that in another couple days. Uh, but that's it for this one. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your friends, join the Facebook group. It's linked down below. And I'll see you on the next one.